This video is brought to you by Nokian Tires, a leader in safety and sustainability. Maximize performance and efficiency with their made in USA all season tires and their dedicated Hakapalita EV winter line from the inventor of the winter tire. Learn more at nokiantire.com slash EV. This video is also brought to you by Magna, forward for all. Hello everyone, welcome to Out of Spec Reviews. I'm Ryan, today we've got the Ionic 6 and it's the limited trim and we're gonna be taking it on a 70 mile per hour range test. So let me tell you a little bit about the car and a little bit about our test. This is the Ionic 6 and we have the limited trim which is the top spec. Now, to give you some information about this, it uh, runs on the eGMP platform. So that's the same platform as the Ionic 5, EV6, Genesis GV60. Uh, so very similar to that. It has the same battery and same charging. So that's 77.4 kilowatt hours and up to 240 uh, kilowatts of peak charging. It's a fantastic uh, vehicle for charging. It's so fast, uh, zero to, uh, sorry, 10 to 80% in about 18 minutes under great conditions. And as I mentioned before, this is the limited trim. So this is the top spec and it's all wheel drive. Uh, we are riding on 20 inch wheels and these are Pirelli P0 all season electric tires. On the EPA cycle, this version of the Ionic 6 is rated for 270 miles of range. However, the long range rear wheel drive uh, Ionic uh, base trim is rated for 361 miles. Now, of course, it makes sense that that would have better range because it has just rear wheel drive instead of all wheel drive and smaller wheels. However, I don't think that there's going to be a 90 mile difference between uh, that version and this version, which is to say, I think this can do more than 270 miles. But of course, that's why we're doing this test. Our 70 mile per hour range test aims to give you a good idea as to what real world range will be because as we all know, EPA cycle uh, and ratings aren't always the most accurate. So for this, what I've done is the first thing is of course, set the tire pressures to the manufacturer recommendation pressures. Uh, and I did that this morning. And now we're currently charging up the vehicle and we're going to charge it all the way up to 100%. Now this will get the battery nice and warm and it's a very warm day uh, in the high 70s. Very minimal wind, as you can see from the flag. And we're gonna charge up the car. It, the battery will be nice and warm when we unplug. And additionally, I have the vehicle running right now. So AC is on and uh, keeping the cabin cool. As far as uh, AC, we always set the temperature between 68 and 72 degrees on the lowest automatic setting possible. And we keep that consistent with all of our tests. As I mentioned, the vehicle's running while we're charging and the AC is on. The reason we do that is to make sure the cabin is nice and cool when we get in so it doesn't take a ton of energy right when we start to cool down a really hot cabin. Once I reach 100% state of charge, what I'm going to do is simply unplug the car and get in and drive out onto the highway. Of course, I'm going to be in the most uh, eco uh, setting possible, so that's eco drive mode, and that will give us the best range. It's actually pretty important in this vehicle since it should disconnect the front motor, giving us better range. And we're going to hop on the highway, which is just over there, and go on to uh, 70 miles per hour, and that's a GPS speed of 70 miles an hour. We're just going to drive north on I-25 and then uh, head east on I-80 once we reach Wyoming. From there, we're just gonna continue driving until we've used about half of the battery, a little bit more than half, and then we're going to turn around and head back to right where, right where we started. The reason we do that is to negate any sort of elevation gain or loss that we have throughout the route. So because we're starting and ending at the same location, there is no net elevation gain or loss. Additionally, it should help cancel out any sorts of wind. Uh, any tailwind will now become a headwind going on the way back. Uh, but again, as I mentioned, not too much wind today. 
And what we're going to do is run the car out. We're going to take it all the way on the highway and stay on the highway as long as possible at 70 miles an hour. Once we're at a very low state of charge, we're going to get off of the highway just for safety reasons in case we do run out. And then we're going to continue driving the vehicle uh, on the side roads. Uh, we've got some fronted roads next, right next to us, which is a great opportunity for us to run the battery out very low. I intend to use all of the buffers in this battery and get as much range as possible. We've completed charging, so time to unplug and head onto the highway. And as I mentioned, we're just going to do some gentle acceleration to minimize any sort of uh, losses from heat uh, up to 70 miles per hour. Also wanted to mention that 70 miles per hour on the speedometer is 70 miles per hour GPS speed. So locked in, we got cruise control going so we can uh, just buckle in for the ride. You're joining me just after I merged onto I-80. Things are going well. Um, again, no, no wind. The weather is fantastic, perfect for a range test. Things have been going really smoothly. I also wanted to comment a little bit about what this car is like to be in. Uh, now for context, I actually own a Model 3, and that's actually the rear wheel drive, so that's the entry level version. But these are still competitors, and I think this car is really nice. I, I think it's a significantly quieter than the Tesla and a good bit more comfortable. I will say that this vehicle is definitely not sporty by any means, but I don't think that's necessarily needed in uh, this model. The sound system is only okay, a little bit better than mine, but nothing to write home about. Uh, and this is even the upgraded one, so not too great. But I am very impressed by overall road noise um, and comfort. So pretty, pretty low wind noise, pretty low tire noise. It's a nice, comfortable place to uh, spend some time. I crossed over to 75% state of charge, as you can see in the bottom left, and we've done a bit more than 75 miles, meaning we are on track to do more than 300 miles on this uh, charge. That's really awesome. I'm pretty excited about that. I'm also, I wanted to comment about Highway Driving Assist, which is uh, Hyundai Kia's uh, lane centering adaptive cruise control system. It's been really solid. It, uh, keeps the lane pretty well. Uh, there are a few times where it does feel like it's surging a tiny bit, like accelerating and decelerating by half a mile an hour, but for the most part it's extremely smooth uh, and it handles lane changes uh, as well as uh, minor road work and cones like we see up here. Totally fine. Just exiting now, and uh, of course, using regenerative brakes to slow myself down, nice and gentle. Uh, turned around a little bit early, but no problem. Uh, I saw just a bunch of trucks up ahead, didn't really want to deal with that. And again, just a gentle acceleration up, and we're gonna go to 70 miles an hour on the GPS. Uh, speedometer, which is actually the same thing. There we go. And uh, one lane closed, but not a problem. There's uh, nothing ahead of us. Should be smooth sailing still. I crossed over to 50% state of charge down the bottom left, and uh, we're on track to do a little less than 300 miles now, but uh, again, we're in the middle of the route, so We'll have to uh, just see where it ends up, but either way, uh, things are going pretty well. And that efficiency, 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour, is decent, but not, not super amazing. So let's keep an eye on that. Hopefully it'll improve. There's a little bit of road work going on, so it's switched over to a one lane road. However, still able to maintain 70, and uh, everyone ahead of me is going a little bit faster, so no problem whatsoever. Now at 25%, that last leg was uh, a bit less efficient than the other ones. Um, however, we still have plenty of juice to make it back to uh, Wellington. 
and likely we'll be able to do a few laps around uh, on the highway. I'm still hoping that we might be able to get to uh, 300 miles, but we'll have to see. As you can see, it says low EV battery, and that occurred right when I hit 20% state of charge. So, a little warning right there, and it tells me to visit a nearby charger. That's our exit for Wellington and the chargers, but we're gonna continue on. We still have 13% state of charge, which is plenty. We're going to get off at the next exit coming up, which is in a few miles. Uh, it starts to get uh, have a bit more traffic after that. And we're just going to loop on the highway uh, back and forth nearby the charger and uh, get it down pretty low before we jump off the highway and go to the frontage roads. I just got a message from 10% state of charge and it told me to visit a nearby charging station and it said actually visit it immediately in the driver's display. Uh, we still have 10% and uh, the percentage gauge turned to red now and uh, here's a few of our stats plan is still to just uh, continue here, uh, try to maintain 70, and uh, pull off at a much lower uh, state of charge. Our exit's coming up, and it's time to come off the highway. We've got 5% left, so we can run it out on the frontage roads, and you can take a look at just uh, 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour there, uh, 260 miles or so on the highway. Pretty solid. Moving along at the frontage roads, not quite 70, but still keeping up some speed and just running it out to zero. I'm down to about 3% state of charge and I actually have an OBD dongle. And what that means is I can get a lot of really good specific information about the vehicle. Uh, and that's directly from it, what, it's, what it knows about itself. And I can see what it states the battery is at and what it actually thinks the battery is at. And it looks like there's about a 4% buffer uh, there's also uh, some energy remaining, which should be able to help me gauge how much I have left. But it appears that there's a good bit of buffer uh, at 0%, but we'll keep looking and uh, see how far we can go. I just hit 0% and it says power limited. We got turtle mode. Um, it's press OK. It still says one mile, so we can do a few loops around. Oh, maybe not. We'll see. I'll keep looping and let you guys know how it goes. It keeps digging and telling me that power is limited. However, I've got acceleration. Uh, it's, it's going okay. So my plan is to keep on looping around here, uh, trying to keep at least some speed up, but not too far from the charger because I don't want to get stranded. The BMS is indicating 1% state of charge. AC is now blowing, blowing lukewarm air and it's be uh, binging a ton and that's flooring it. There's really not much left. I can give it a few loops around the, uh, the parking lot, but it's, it's pretty dead. I've been looping around the parking lot a little bit and there's just not much left. BMS is saying 0% and flooring it is like that. So I don't think we're gonna get much more. It's not gonna make it to 282. So I'm just gonna go ahead, pull in and uh, park to charge. Make sure I don't slam into the poles. Good job, Brian. And those are our final stats. 281 miles at 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour. Now, again, this is the limited all-wheel drive, so this is pretty much the worst case scenario as far as range. Any other trim should get more range than this, and it did exceed its EPA rating. However, it was a little bit less than I was expecting and the efficiency is a tiny bit worse than I was expecting. Hello everyone. You're joining me the next morning post haircut. So I apologize for that continuity error, 
but I wanted to take the time to show you a little bit more about this data and put it in context with other vehicles that we've tested. So what I have here is a graph showing uh, all the sedans that we've tested in our 70 mile per hour range test. The first thing I want to go over is testing conditions. Now, here for the Ionic 6, it was great. We had 70 to 80 degrees and absolutely no wind. Those are ideal and perfect conditions for getting the maximum range possible. Unfortunately, that's not always the case when we do our testing. Sometimes it's a little bit cold, sometimes there's a little bit of wind. And that's just the unfortunate reality of testing in the real world. However, we do our best to control as many variables as possible and test under the best conditions we have available. With that out of the way, we can take a look at some of this data. Up at the top, we of course have the Lucid Air Grand Touring, which really should be no surprise to anyone. It has great efficiency at four miles per kilowatt hour and a massive battery. That's actually not the most efficient sedan we've tested. That honor goes to the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive, which had 4.5 miles per kilowatt hour. However, the Ionic 6 at 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour is still the third most efficient sedan we've tested yet, which is pretty solid and really good considering that is the least efficient Ionic 6 you can currently purchase. So every other version should do better than that. Additionally, we end up with a range of 281 miles. That is actually just one mile more than the Tesla Model 3 Performance. Of course, we have to mention that the Model 3 Performance is a good bit sportier and a lot quicker. However, the Ionic 6 has better range. I'm gonna take a moment to hover over all these other uh, vehicles so you can take a look at some of those details and compare them. Uh, take a pause if you'd like to. But I'm really excited to be sharing this tool with you, and I'm excited to hear what you guys have to say. I'll see you guys on the next one.